How far is it? Do I have to drive very far? My guy. How are you? My guy. Looking Featuring good. Featuring the YouTube channel. Look too, because I just was able to take off the back half. I went to some horse shows. I had to get some things together. My parents are doing much better. When I worked at Burger King. You didn't. My guy. Long time no see. Shades. <laughs> Good. What are you gonna get? Oh my gosh, I don't know yet. Um, okay, Benedict's on there is on the list. I'm looking at the classic. Oh, the breakfast chimichanga. Mm. What do you have there? Breakfast chimichanga and the truffles. It's amazing. Someone's hungry. Mm. <laughs> What a way to start the week. First thoughts of Union Rooftop Grill. Awesome. Great people, great food. Prices were really okay, considering how much we ate. We all know how much Jonathan eats. <laughs> so, um, don't get cheese curds around him. He had like three orders. But other than <laughs> Only that, two yeah. two orders though. It was, was it two? Two, all right, yeah. All right, but yes, awesome. It was beautiful. Uh, slight breeze. Perfect for fall. Perfect for fall. Downtown Minneapolis. Here's the oldest department store in Minneapolis right here. It's called Dayton's. From the Dayton family back in the 50s. And it's back when everybody shopped at department stores. It's right here. See. But now it's empty. I've been here a year and Jeff is teaching me a lot about the city, which is nice because Last year, obviously, with how busy I am, I've never get a chance to actually know about the city or learn about its history, about its buildings. So it's nice that Jeff is actually teaching me because he's like the pro here. He's so, aging me. He's <laughs> making me feel old. Nah, he's but still young. I love Minneapolis. 62 though. young. Minneapolis is a great city. And he's going on a cruise ship to celebrate his retirement. He's here going was, to. Here was the name of the department store right here. Here you go. Many people will know this name. It's called Dayton's. As you guys saw, we just wrapped up with Union Rooftop. Haven't seen my guy, Jeff, in a while, but it's always good. And the reason that we're doing this video and the title of this video, you know, the importance of building meaningful, uh, great relationships, friendships, that's what life is about, right? It's about getting to learn and experience life through the relationship that you have, the experiences. Jonathan keeps me young and he gives me a lot of knowledge as well so i think it's a a great thing to have so it happens when you get old you get out too much knowledge exactly but and the friendships that you build throughout the years it, with work and everything are the things that last a lifetime like these he's moments, like my son yeah he's like my i don't see you as a i see you as a peer peer yeah thank you so we had fun it's been like a month or so like here's one important one here is where Mary Tyler Moore. Facts. He's giving this you is facts. This Mary right Tyler Moore, the TV show for all of those who you remember. It's the most Emmy award winning show ever in comedy to her hat. Right down here. She threw her hat on. And she walked through here. And this was Nicolette. There used to be all shops here. It's very sad now. They're all cut down. They're all, they're all closed now. It happened after George Floyd and um, what happened in Minneapolis, but it's rebuilding, which is good. And to the left here was the most expensive jewelry store in Minnesota. Right here, it's empty, obviously. It's crazy to look at how cities evolve and change throughout the years. Yep. Like Jeff was telling me how the different buildings were companies like True. Target Corporation, and now they're no longer there. There was malls here. There was a, a bunch of, you know, gentlemen's clubs and a lot of strip clubs strip clubs and all that sort of stuff so the fact that it's evolving there's still a couple there's still a couple it's still evolving i think it's uh makes you sort of appreciate changes in life 
and I think changes and also sad because in the city itself um it's just very sad what's happened if you want to go buy clothes downtown anymore yeah there's very few places you can go there's not a lot of options and i hope someday it's I hope someday it gets it's back yeah and i think it's the perception that it's not safe i think that's what people are it's like it's actually pretty safe here i feel sa i mean i've been here very safe. an entire year i haven't had any issues or anything let's go down here we didn't walk down here before um right? no this so is it's been a day here it's been a year and I haven't had any issues with feeling unsafe here in downtown and I walk a lot in downtown so I think once people start getting comfortable getting comfortable again. I think this will get back again and to see how just there we're now closed a lot of places that used to be open malls are no longer here but, but yeah Jeff is giving me like the tour oh show me the skyway and here. now we're gonna so go how you go to work now we're gonna go to Show them how you my go to apartment work up here. That's how you go to work in the winter. In the winter, you never have to go outside. Very convenient. Look at him chilling, big chilling. First time in a building. Beautiful building. Thanks for the cappuccino, cappuccino. made by Jonathan's Jonathan's machine. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. First reaction. Building. It's too classy in here for him. I can't believe they let him in. They love me here. Ooh, look at this, nice. Oh, so you can come out here and just yeah. hang out? Yeah. We can go to the, do you want to go left or right? Oh, left. Left. Oh, look at this. So we could rent this out for a meeting we have? for This one right here we can rent out by the hour. So if I do a dot here, I can bring everybody here. What if I fall asleep here? Would they come and get me security? Maybe. Look at the city, it's beautiful. Take a little panoramic of the city, it's yeah. stunning. And you can actually open these right here. What a great, great place. It's a great building. You wanna walk outside? Let's walk outside. I'm too comfortable laying here, I'm gonna sleep. Okay. Right. Oh, look at they've got little lawn chairs. Yeah. So we can get tan. Yeah, you can get tan. Do people lay out in the summer, like lay yeah, out there? I do. And can we grill anytime you want? Yeah. Downtown. I'm scared of Downtown. Right. Hang on. Chef or Chef Jeff or burger, Griller Chef? Let's just do burgers and hot dogs. It's the only thing I like. <laughs> what do you think? Love it. Love it. I would live here in a minute. Moving in down. Moving to downtown. You're my idol. <laughs> I'm following you. But it would be really something. That building there is beautiful too. That's also a. Uh, those are condos. People buy those. I forgot their name is. Condo. The Carlisle. It's called the Carlisle. Go. Go ahead. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Look at this. Look at your furniture. Yeah, I got a. Your mom must have done this. I didn't know you had this good taste. Nah. <laughs> wow, beautiful. I got a couch. Where'd you get this? Wayfair. Really, Clay Clarkson. Beautiful. So, the couch Wayfair. Oh my God. The TV I just spilled stand. Just coffee all over it. Wayfair. Wayfair. So you bought it online, not knowing what it would look like. I well, I saw pictures of it, but. Is Wayfair a really good deal? Yeah, six hundred and fifteen for the couch. For the couch? Yeah. You're kidding me. Yeah. Wow. Have you fallen asleep on it before? Yeah. I'd fall asleep on it. I want to fall asleep on it now. And then. And then your desk is over here. Where'd you get the desk? I got the desk in. Uh, I think it was Amazon. And how big is your TV? Sixty-five. It is. Yeah, I wanted to get a, a big, big TV to fit in with like the space and everything. It's, Are you a gamer? No. I. Fun fact. I was considering getting a PS5 just to have something to unwind to, you know, because sometimes games are a great way for you to, you know, detox from, you know, work, etc. But then I decided to hold it off and save up that money for something else. But, I love it. I love the fact you don't game. But yeah. Gaming is destroying our society. Yeah. Gaming and Facebook. And Facebook and social media. Well, some social media is good, like yeah. TikTok. 
the I, I know. I'm the only 62 year old. I'm a Swifty at 60. But yeah. I follow everything Taylor does. Really nice. I have, let me see, I'm going to show you right here. No idea. Look at all the, these were the friendship bracelets I oh got. Oh my God. From the Taylor I've got Swift a ton concert. of, I got more than you. I must be friendlier. No, I was too busy. Oh, here's Lover. I'm going to love these. Ready? Um, this one is, I don't know what this one is. The, um, which one? Speak, Speak Now. Speak Now, one set. Uh, uh, look what you made me do. Oh, the debut album. And then Evermore. Evermore. Can I have the Evermore one? Do you want it? Do you want it? I do. You can grab it. I love it. Evermore. It's the most underrated album she's done. Should have won Best Album at the Grammys. You can take this one. I'm going to. Here. There's one from London. I think some a girl came from London to the stadium. No, London is a London boy. It's her name of her uh, boyfriend. Oh. It's the name of a song. And then I also got the actual... Does it go off anymore at all? No, it turned off. It was fun fact for everyone out there. Those Taylor Swift bands lasted a few days, nonstop, with the color and everything. All right. Oh, look at this. Huge window. Yeah. Yeah, where'd you get the bed? Uh, Ikea. Nightstand nice at Ikea too. Are you always this organized like me? Look at this. Where'd you get these hangers? Um, Target. And you're all organized. Yeah. I don't have a lot of clothes because I'm not a very, like I don't shop a lot at all. So. What you, what you have, you wear. What I, yeah, what I have, I, I wear. That. And I, I'm get, I get creative with the combinations I and everything. Just like that. Don't get them wet in the winter, but they're great in fall. What do you, as you got to know me, working with me, what do you thought about myself as far as a person or with the, my attitude, et cetera? Well, for me, I remind me of myself um, and at the same age, um, always looking forward, always being positive, and I think most importantly, having a plan and goals. And something that I lost this summer because I, of me taking care of my parents is oh, September 1st is my reset, always to have planning goals. So you know where you're gonna be or where you want to be. Because without a plan, you don't know where you're going. And so you remind me of that. It's so positive attitude. So I'd always go to you when things weren't going well. And I would always like, here, this is motivating because I'm looking at downsizing my house at 62, even though I'm very young still, and living in a space like this, and it would be really, really positive. Um, I'd love this space. You don't need a bigger space than this. It's probably about 800 square feet, I'm thinking. Um, and so it's really, really nice that way. Why pay for stuff you're not going to use? Exactly. Like I love the fact this doesn't have a dining room. But anyways, back to your question. Um, positive, um, planful, and um, people really like you. The trick with you, though, the downside, is making sure you don't spread yourself too thin in order to burn yourself out or get exhausted and put your energies in things that matter. This is a great thing to say because I think in a way, all of us are spreading ourselves too thin, and I think we get too distracted with wanting things quick and not being patient because social media, everything is quick. Scrolling through TikTok, swiping on uh, Instagram, yeah, etc. Yeah. Like if you don't like a video, you, you swipe quick. Like the first three seconds, you don't like it, switch. What that creates in our head is like, if you don't like, I'll switch. If I don't have it right now, I don't want it. Like it has to. You know, we have to grow as a society and understand that things take time. Things that are worthwhile take time. With that, not only things, but also relationships, friendships, take time to build trust. I mean, when was it? I started December. So since December of 2022, I'm getting to know Jeff, work with him. Did I train you? Was I your trainer? He trained me as well. So we- I blasted out, I don't remember. He, he was one of the first people that I connected with at work. And obviously he told me a lot of his personality, the same mentality when it comes to the positive attitude to taking care of people, talking with people, being open to, you know, engaging in conversation. I think that's something that a lot of people need to do more of because you never know where a, a friendship or a relationship can take you as learning more about yourself, learning more about, in this case today, learning more about downtown Minneapolis, learning more about the city and even business because he has a lot of business experience as well True. and I enjoy business as well so it's all those things that it's like a yin and yang of friendship which is a 50-50 like it comes it's a two-way street I think every one of you guys should find people in your life that you can 
have a relationship like this. Like mm-hmm. I haven't seen Jeff in about one and a half months or maybe two months, but we saw each other today. He texted me the other day and said, let's link up and do some brunch. And then we went from, for brunch and we've been catching up and it never, it felt like we never seen each other. Like it's weird. You catch up quick. You catch up quick. Like your goal, part of my September reset, September 1st, I'm going to Alaska for three weeks because it's part of my, I call it my fall reset, which is important. And so for me, I'm going to Alaska for two and a half weeks. So we've already made an engagement the third week of the month to go to a different restaurant every month for once a month that will yeah. give us 12 new restaurants in the city. We're gonna invite maybe one or two other friends on occasion. Mm-hmm. So either a brunch or a dinner. I personally like brunches, like love mimosas. And so we're gonna do brunches and then, you know, Sunday, just meet at nine o'clock and go to like really cool places in the city. So, although we're gonna go back to Union again. And I think, and I think that's, that's a great thing to do because you gotta maintain, you gotta foster a relationship and sometimes schedules are different. Um, time zones are different, you know, circumstances are different that you don't have to see a person every single day, text them every single day to have meaningful connection, meaningful relationship. It's, I saw this quote the other day on Instagram. I, I'm, I'm gonna check it out if I can find the post and put it on screen for you guys. But it talked about, it doesn't necessarily, have, you have to live with a person, spend time, text with them a lot to get to know someone and connect with someone. Sometimes it's how present you were in the time that you had with them. So if it was like a short interaction where you present in that moment, that's where you build those memories or those connections that, because you remember all oh, that person was present here. They engage, they ask questions to get to know more about me and know about- but Here's me. what I do too. Do you notice this here? My phone's upside down all today because I'm a total phone addict. I love my iPhone. <laughs> I turn it upside down. Exactly, me too. Period. And so I've not looked at this. I started posting something on Facebook and Jonathan said, you can post that later. And mm-hmm. I thought, oh, isn't that interesting? So of course I took some good pictures, but leaving the phone upside down or not bringing it with you, I think is so critical, don't you? Yeah, I think you gotta shut down. I would have been on Facebook for 10 minutes yeah. if you didn't say that. I mean, Jeff and I were walking. Because I want everybody to know how wonderful my life is. What did you say? There's a lot of people that all of them were on the As we're walking down the street, we walked about, it was about right five to 10 blocks. I found one group of people, the three, that did not have their phones out. Mothers, fathers, everybody, they all had their phones out. And I don't know what they were looking at, um, but it was all their phones out, which I thought was sad. And I think we really need to start acknowledging that. It's, it's a society. Yeah, I think it's we, sad. I think we gotta it's start, not guilty. start being present. Yeah. Like being, you know, Shutting down technology and focusing on the person because we want to show absolutely we want to show the world what we're doing. Like I'm, we're here at brunch. It's we're just here and being present. Yeah, but being present sort of makes you more connected to not only what's going on, what's going on, but also with the person and you respect the person based on how present you are. Because I think one of the most important things in building relationships, friendships, you know, with family or whatever the case may be is how present you were when you were with them because that means that you appreciate their time. You There's two types them. of people in this world, right? Yeah, go ahead. The first one is, this is me sometimes, but I fight it. <laughs> hello, here I am, right? Bright colors, hi everybody. Or, hello, how are you? Mm. So I always try to think like I started with Jonathan today and I told him everything about me in about 10 minutes in my car and then I flipped it. <laughs> And then started talking about him, but he is a very much how are you person, so it was interesting because he always tries to put it back, but I was putting it back because we we're talking about goals and stuff. So really evening that out. So hello, here I am. Mm-mm. Hello, how are you? You'll have so many friends when you say that. Mm. You have so many friends when you say that. It's just unbelievable. You'd be surprised how much people you get to know and learn more about by asking questions. Like we were our server today, her name was Kat, great girl. She was, she was like very personable. We were, Jeff was talking about his, you know, trip retirement, to Alaska, yeah. trip to Alaska. He asked her where has she traveled. And she First said, class on a cruise line. She's going to Australia. He, oh, well, Vietnam. She, yeah, Cambodia. She, she went to Vietnam. She went to Australia. To you know, all that. So it's like. She told us all about Cambodia and Vietnam, fun. which if, for those of you who live in this country know what that was about. And she just said it was 
stunning. Yeah, and she Coastal. said that Vietnam is so also happy. recommended. Yep. Vietnam yep. is one of the most beautiful places that she yep. visited. And that's on my, that's on my bucket nice. list. So I think, yep. yeah, I think we got to also think about places that we want to travel outside of the United States because you get to see the different cultures. And she was explaining, or I think you were explaining the difference in Brazil. And how they Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, and how they, they talk about how they happy they are. Poor people, even despite they're so their happy. I would have moved there in a minute with no money. I've never seen happier people in my life, and they were so kind. Made good coffee too. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they put in it, but it made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the thing to to wrap this little TED talk up. Um, you gotta find, you gotta ask questions instead of focusing on talking more about you. You gotta ask. Questions for them. Be interested, not interesting. Mm. Be interested, not interesting. Be interested and not interesting. I think nowadays everybody wants to be interesting. Everybody wants to be the topic of a discussion. It's exhausting. Center of attention, the spotlight. But be interested, not interesting. Hmm. That's another for you guys. So stay tuned. We still got a couple more things to do on this day. We're hanging out and. And if you live in Minnesota, come and have brunch with us. Exactly. Fourth yeah. weekend of this month on a Sunday. My subscribers, whoever of and you guys. It'll be about me. It'll be all about Alaska. If you guys, whoever is in Minnesota, comment down below and I'll see if I can do like a little private brunch. I'm going to select one or a few people and then Jeff and I can go on brunch with you guys. Because it's always good to get to know them. Here's something like 16 personal. bucks is up. Is yeah. Up drink. Really nice. Really nice. But comment down Five below star. and. We'll catch you guys in a bit because we're going to grab, what? Cappuccino? I'm going to grab I'm gonna get another shopping. cappuccino and then go home. I need to take a nap. He's exhausted me. Exhausted. It's always, always good to catch up with great people and Jeff is no exception. I mean, I've been knowing him since December of last year. Had a chance to work under his wing for a little while and work uh, as a colleague with him. And getting to know him, getting to know his life story, we're both on different chapters of our life, but we are equally invested in development, equally invested in people, and on growing as individuals. And I think that's one thing that I gravitated towards the most with Jeff, and I think he could say the same thing as well. We are both visionaries, as we mentioned. We're both people that have great positive attitudes, enjoy getting to know people, talk with people, and build relationships even with the conversation that we had with the young lady that served us at union rooftop she just talked a little bit about how her trip was how she went from working at corporate and not enjoying it and then deciding to start doing her own thing and traveling to australia traveling to cambodia to vietnam and getting to know different people it's always always a joy because it makes you appreciate life makes you appreciate the different journeys that people are on and I'm, I'm blessed and grateful that Jeff and I were able to connect and, and have a, a friendship that more than a colleague I think I, I can truly say that he's he's a friend a mentor and someone that I can trust with whatever questions that I have whatever you know curiosities that I have at 25 he's 62 he's had many many experiences more than i do he has had corporate experience business experience and i think with the type of person that he has and that he is sorry there's a lot of things that i can learn from him because i see myself i see a lot of the qualities that i have in myself in him and i think he does as well and it's all about building meaningful relationships and you do those by being open as we talked about asking the other person how are you instead of talking about yourself you know fostering conversations through different questions that you ask them and I think slowly but surely and years go on loyalty friendships brotherhoods all those take time everything that works well takes time to build and to foster it and I think that's what that's what has been the case for me and Jeff. And one of the things that I, at 25, I've learned the most is the importance of building relationship, building meaningful relationship and networking. I think when I was in college, my freshman year, and when our business classes would tell us that we need to go to the career fair because it, it was required and, you know, you would 
get in your head as a freshman and saying, oh, I don't want to go and this and that. But getting yourself out there, getting to know people either in the corporate sense or in the social sense, it's important to talk with people because you get a new sense of appreciation for life. You get a new sense of knowledge about the person's journey, about your own journey as well. And I, that's one thing that Jeff has taught me a lot. He has had the same mentality, has had the same work ethic, and the same passion to not only getting better, but also helping those around him. And he has helped me understand and have a different perspective, even with, you know, how he said that I got to take care of myself and, and not spread myself too thin. I think that's a thing that I oftentimes think about, but never actually put it in practice. So the fact that he notices it based on our conversation and obviously me telling him how everything's going in, in my life and catching up, um, that's one thing that I, I realized that I think all of us can relate to as far as you know wanting to do a lot of things and taking on a lot of things and not knowing and learning how to say no to things just because wanting to please everyone else instead of yourself. But one thing that I've learned is how to understand myself so that way I can take care of myself and by doing so I can better take care of others and better take care of their relationships and their their time their energy and that's something that I truly am grateful that Jeff has taught me so hope you guys enjoy this video hope you guys get some value out of it and I hope you guys build meaningful relationships because Those are truly one of the most important things in life that you can get. So take care. I will see you in the next one. Peace.